afternoon ladies and gentlemen uh, my name is pr goswami one of the members of the organizing team of this webinar on behalf of the ranganathan research circle i welcome you to this webinar on a very interesting and new subject that is increasing library visibility using chat gpt and open ai platform we are meeting up online after a long gap it is perhaps true that webinars attract more participants because we have already approximately 200 registered participants attending than a physical event particularly in the month of may which is terribly hot in delhi the cost of organizing a webinar is less compared to a physical event but we feel that in person academic programs have a special merit we can meet and have one to one close interaction with our friends and academic experts and build or expand our social network today we have a new subject using chat gpt and open ai platform for library visibility also we have a very distinguished speaker dr santunu ganguli who is well versed with this subject newspapers and magazines are full of news items and articles on chat gpt and open ai there was a fear among school administrators a few months ago that chat gpt will have an adverse effect on school education because students will be able to do their homework using this tool let stephen hawkins the eminent physicist had said that in the event of machine becoming more intelligent than humans it will spell a doom for the entire humanity we can say it is difficult to predict the future of technology technology is changing very fast ai tools are doing many things which are which were unimaginable a few years ago they are creating original artworks which are difficult to distinguish playing chess and converting talks to a different language in the same voice yesterday day before yesterday i could see brian lara the former cricketer speaking hindi in his own voice as an expert commentator during the ipl match there are many other instances time has come for bringing innovative ideas in library service it is important to generate values for new ideas by using ai tools and we have a very distinguished resource person who can tell about these exciting things to all the participants now i would like to introduce our speaker dr santonu ganguli he has a very distinguished academic career he has msc in ecology and environmental science he is masters degree in library and information science he has a mba with specialization in marketing management post graduate diploma in computer application advanced diploma in healthcare management delete in knowledge management from thames international university and he has a long experience in teaching and research conducting online programs and he also been editors of very very renowned journals and newsletters he has worked in some of the very leading organizations which include university of delhi indian institute of management lucknow national productivity council voluntary health association of india iilm terry NIMS, NIMS University and of course All India Institute of Medical Science. His areas of specialization are project management, knowledge management, communication strategy, digital marketing strategy, infopreneurship. Editor of journal like World Digital Library, and he has organized a very important. Uh, international conference on digital library when he was in Terry. now he has conducted many professional development programs and he was director of projects principal investigator of research projects funded by the department of biotechnology dst dsir 
World Bank, ADB, etc. So with this brief introduction, uh, we can request Dr. Santunu Ganguly, but before that, I would request Dr. Nirmal Kumar Khatri to say just a few words about Ranganathan Research Circle and the Ranganathan Research Trust and what they are doing and what they have done so far. Over to Dr. Nirmal Kumar Khatri. Thank you, Dr. Goswami. <clears throat> Good evening to all. I am Dr. Khatri, retired from Indian Statistical Institute, Delhi Center. Uh, the Ranganathan Research Circle was formed in 1993 by a group of energetic library professionals headed by late Sri C. B. Subarao to symbolize the working research spirit. To further expand its activities, the Ranganathan Research Trust was formed in 1995. RRC is functioning as an organ of Ranganathan Research Trust. The aim of RRC is to arrange a meeting for working librarians, information scientists, specialists, LIS educationists, and others to exchange views on practical problems faced by them in carrying out their professional work and also to base future research on practical themes. The objective of RRT, Rangalatha Research Trust, are research, training, consultancy, and exchange of information through seminars and publications for betterment of LIS professionals. LIC, LIS, uh, RRC is holding lectures, seminars, presentations based on research on special themes, followed by open discussions. The proceedings of such lectures, talks are published in RRC newsletter for circulation and for information of those who are unable to attend the session. RRC celebrates the Librarian's Day on 12th August every year on the birthday of Dr. S. R. Ranganathan, the father of library science. RRC holds annual convention in the month of January every year. Ranganathan Research Trust has six committees with different tasks, each headed by an eminent professional. The committees are research and training, just a minute. Research and Consultancy Projects Committee, Training Programs Committee, RRC Programs Committee, Publications Committee, Publication, uh, Public Relations Committee, and CBS Award Committee. The work of these committees is carried out by dedicated research members on voluntary basis and is coordinated by the chairperson RRT and president RRC. Special efforts. Members of RRC undertook work in Tehar jail, including donation of books and activating the jail library and were instrumental in opening a branch of Delhi Public Library for the benefit of the prisoners. Every year, RRC is organizing a half-day seminar in Pragati Maidan during Delhi Book Fair. RRC is setting an example of selfless service and devotion, on the, devotion to the social and professional cause. The RRC appeals to all the all allies professionals to join hands and support its activities by participation in its program. It is proposed to launch a website for RRC to make its activities at global level. The activities of RRC will be enhanced at national and international level for the benefit of allies professionals. Thank you all. I Now I request our professor and doctor, eminent scientist, Dr. Santanam Ganguly, please present your talk. Thank you. At Dr. the outset, let me take this opportunity to thank all my uh, seniors. My mentors are all here. My uh, well-known friend, Dr. P.R. Goswami, Dr. Nirmal Khatri. I'm meeting after a long years with Rajiv Ranjan here and all my fellow members who have joined. Well, before I start my presentations, uh, let me give you in a nutshell that, uh, well, over the years, uh, I have collected a lot of, you know, uh, informations and a lot of skills and knowledge by practicing with my students or 
everywhere. So whatever I would be, you know, telling you, it would be in a nutshell, not the entire thing, because this kind of programs, when I conduct in my PDP programs, it takes almost four to five hours where I generally give the assignments to the students who <laughs> basically operate work on that particular platforms and then create that. In fact, in my last university, which was NIMS University, I did it because I was a professor and director of the NIMS School of Business where I conducted these programs for my various verticals of the students, and they came out with the uh, uh, came out with different kinds of models, and uh, it was a very successful. I conducted a program with uh, winning competitions also, and everybody got uh, the winners got the very good prizes. So what when Dr. Goswami approached me for a topic and all, I said let me also use the same thing with the because my PhD is in library marketing because. My uh, guru was uh, Professor Dinesh Gupta, who is very well known internationally for the uh, for the library marketing aspect. So I have whatever I have learned, and my uh, I have learned from him only. So let me share my screen. Uh, uh, can all of you see my screen? All of you can see my screen. Yes. Yes, can you yes. see my screen? Yes. Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, we can so, see. So basically, currently, I'm working as the director of the Ashoka University Library. And the topic which I'm going to take is increasing the library visibility using chat GPT and open AI platforms. So there in my entire presentations, it would be divided into three major components. First, I will be talking about uh, briefly about my SDFC library. A brief on the digital marketing aspects I will be taking care of. I have to rush through that. And last but not the least, the application of ChatGPT and OpenAI, because all three of them are correlated here in this particular presentation. Now, uh, can all of you see my new screen yeah. on HDF, uh, the uh, unlocking knowledge? Yes, can yes. You, okay. So basically, this entire presentation was developed by my team and especially i would like to name here my team members my uh, my like for example charu and uh, charu sharma and you know sadbir and uh, like shukal and all they have helped me to design this entire sdfc library uh, my library where you be really unlock the knowledge so i'll welcome you here and let me see if i am this is a small video is there and this is the first thing we have developed as a marketing film where people can look into uh, that how a marketing component can be created with different aspects. And in fact, you your voice is breaking. So this is basically a small video actually. So this is basically a small video which is there. Probably you are unable to see that. But my library has got uh, a learning hub which has got a more research, collaborations and everything which takes place here. And a lot of opportunities are provided to the different stakeholders of the Ashoka fraternities. And uh, we are. this is some of the kaleidoscope of the entire library which is there. And if and you can feel itself that it has got, uh, we do a lot of into, you know, uh, building a very high, uh, world-class library and we have the best of the infrastructures and thanks to the management of the Ashoka University. <laughs> we have the printed collection of more than, you know, 41,100 course related. We have almost 40,000 personal collections. We have a special sections we have started creating, which is called as Literatures of India. Then we have 804, the rare books. And we have also the 800 uh, fictions are there. And one of the important things which we have started very recently is that we have a huge collections of literatures of India. And we right now, slowly, right now we have uh, only few of the, you know, the uh, literatures are of the different kind of, uh, uh, national languages, which we have collected, but slowly we will be covering all the, the 22 languages and they are going to be uh, we are also to, uh, working to work with the computer science department to work more application of artificial intelligence and machine learning 
in these areas also. We will be coming up very soon. One of the important uh, aspects of my library and which is the strength of my HDFC library is that we have some of the best libraries, personal collections, some of the leading people here. They have donated their entire knowledge resources to HDFC library. So it is one of the unique of its kind. And you can see the some of the resources which we have, we are out of print, but we all of we having all of them at one particular place. As I mentioned that we also have a rare book collection, the book which is opening in front of you. It is basically a, a book on you know the 1400 portfolios of Leonardo da Vinci, where all his designs are there. And uh, this was uh, donated to us also. Then like that, we have the Theorama by the M.F. Hussain. We have the original Gitanjali. We have the Wealth of India of Adam and Smith. All these resources are there. We have a huge amount of e-resources, and all these resources are increasing day by day for the research purpose and all. And we have the more collections of more than 3 lakh uh, books. We have more than 15,000 e-journals and all. Then we also bring in sir, some of the best of the you know, e-databases on each and every subject areas which we have here. The e-books collection is increasing day by day. People are, uh, my students, my uh, you know, faculty fraternity, they are constant into you know, accessing the resources from uh, through uh, various means and with their, you know, uh, with their any device, they can work on remote access basis. We also have a magazine space, some of the best of the magazines from different parts of the country. They are on display there and it is, we are in, I am right now, I am in a, I am in, I am in a mission mode to increase this collection and some of the best print publications from the different parts of the world are going to come and uh, will be, get a space in my library too. And then we also, uh, you know, subscribe to several e-newspapers because uh, because these newspapers are constantly read by the students and many of the assignments are provided to the students, which are basically, that's why they have to go through all these newspapers and all. And, uh, and this is a circulation parameter, which I don't want to go, but we bring in a lot of services to my esteemed faculty members. There is a huge amount of resources are there. So like, for example, we have started a, a new thing since I have got a research backbone so we have started something called as the research support service. We have come up with some innovative models on there probably in some of the sessions. I will take, uh, I will discuss more on those areas. Then we have this plagiarism check. We have the three platforms. We are working constantly, turn it in, drill beat and the ER job. And uh, we also have like digital document delivery on chapter scan, the books, chapters, the articles delivery and all. And we have an interlibrary loan facility from Dellnet. Then uh, as far as the, we also provide a lot of training programs on the reference management tools on EndNote and Mendeley and Zotero. And, uh, and also we also provide, because there is always a demand and we generally have a habit of keeping one copy of the best of the books in our collection. So we have a possibility of books on reserve. And then we also brought in a lot of automations like self-check chaos are there. We have a latest OPAC systems we have, we have implemented here. We have a QR-based um, QR based membership. We have a cloud computing and all. All the systems are already there. We also have the uh, mobile library using the knowledge discovery system. And anybody, anytime with the help of a remote access, they can access all the resources from anywhere. And we have a de dedicated reference desk where, a, uh, uh, where they resolve the queries because we, in a day, we generally get more than 200 to 300 queries. And with the reference queries, a lot of interesting queries comes into and people are basically, you know, uh, providing the services at a random to them. We have created what is called as an LRD, which is a library reference desk, <laughs> like data curation, research support service, database access and training, searching the e-resources, document delivery and all. We also have a very interesting uh, sections. We are coming up an entire collection. We have already created a library of Haryana collections because since we are based in Haryana, 
we are uh, which is in the our previous library called songvi library these are some of the collections of the uh, haryana collections we have but it is increasing day by day we also started a lot of you know library outreach programs my people are sitting uh, outside the library at different you know the joints of the cafe and they are interacting constantly with the students faculties and all and this takes place we have developed a complete training calendar on this and they constantly do this program take their real world feedbacks and everything it is collected and this is a, just a snapshot of whatever the library part is that we have a very strong library website where you can access that website and all it is fully automated and the entire and it is a world class we as a part of the marketing we would like also like to tell you that we brought in a library newsletter and uh, which was developed by the my team and as well as a hdfc library playbook which is basically a kind of a cartoon book which is can be used by the different people and those uh, um, those can be easily you know looked in i mean, I mean it gives a, it talks about the entire services and all probably uh, that's a, another marketing component which we have developed here and so this is a, in a nutshell basically which i am talking about my uh, uh, my um, my sdfc library now i will come down to the next part of my presentation that is on digital marketing so basically the since because the, the entire session is going to be a part of digital marketing that's why i thought let me talk about slightly on a digital marketing because this is one of the major area today there was a very interesting quote by sir hugo uh, victor hugo in his very famous book called law miserables where he has quoted that there is nothing like a dream to create a future so everybody needs to have a particular dream and all so we need to bring in lot of ideations and that is where actually the important components they comes into being when i talk about a marketing we know when we are all library science students or maybe some other subject areas we know there are four p's of marketing like product price place and promotion <laughs> but what is most important in also there is the three more p's that is how you do the packaging where you do the positioning how do you position yourself and your product or a service and then the people and the people who are involved how they are interacting with the different people and all like for example i have given you an example of my library where it is showing the lrd part of it but today's digital marketing is very different we need to understand that because it is like a smart like it has to be specific it has to be measurable it has to be attainable it is not that the goals which you have defined it cannot be attained but it has to be an attainable goal it has to be very realistic and it has to be very timely so as far as digital marketing is concerned so there is a relationship i'll i'll try you how the digital marketing and traditional marketing you know takes place now how it is different because in digital marketing you allows two way communication <laughs> resources can be permanently you know placed online visitors control interactivity with online media online content pulls a lot of people in fact you put a lot of interesting you know content and all it pulls a lot of people like for example this topic i was very surprised when you know the, when anup told me that more than 1100 1100 people they have registered for this particular program unlimited content can be placed on the internet online content can easily be localized for easier geographies digital marketing is measurable today and comparison and testing is also possible and all some of the best practices let me touch upon as far as the digital marketing is concerned digital marketing is the engine that drive to this business which is whether it is a big <coughs> or or a small component effective digital marketing is the marketing that bridges the electronic technology with psychology in the marketplace we need to you know even if we are doing a email marketing we need to have a email marketing strategy for that because you know please please try to understand that one shoe does not fit to all so we need to filter it by demographics filter your message depending upon the end recipients <coughs> you can bring it a lot of interesting newsletters <coughs> which provides a lot of communication let, let me give an example here 
like for example we came uh, we have a huge collection of you know the uh, donations given by the very esteemed uh, you know people of the of the country uh, of their books and those are basically hidden treasures so with the the first uh, ppt where i've shown that the hidden treasures that entire thing i started you know sending it out to my entire fraternity of students as well as my faculty members and i also you know put up the videos at different places i put up the you know very big banners in various important locations of my library people started pouring in they are stepping into and want to see come and see my resources and very important when you do an email marketing and all you need to find out what is the voi that is the value of interest what is the research on interest and, <clears throat> and really you have to look into the the metrics you have to retarget contacts that you haven't converted yet it is very important many people they may not be knowing your resources what you have but you have to you know you have to get in touch with them and then comes your location is everything find the right target by their ip addresses and all another important component is drip campaign like subscription models you have to plan ahead before you do anything you have to make a complete plan of action set your content in advance schedule your campaigns and ahead of the time and subscription programs are basically the pain relievers and please remember the content is the king the amount of content which you are writing and you are making it a visualizing it in a much more attractive way that is where your people is going to get attracted so there is a number of important social media components are available now each and every social media components you have a separate section so your strategy should be developed based on each and every component on that you also need to look at the search engine optimizations like for example create a mobile version of your website in any possible format and today when i am uh, and you know constantly i am into with my you know it team as well as with my those who have provided me the uh, entire uh, the uh, the all the components of the remote access or the e library platforms or the mobile library um, apps they have provided i'm constantly in touch with them and making all the revisions into that particular system itself and want to trying it to make it more attractive as much as possible sometimes it is very important like you have to combine the email with also multimedia because you know nowadays multimedia plays a very very important role <laughs> probably you have written very small content into that but if you embed some multimedia into that it gets more attracted into it the biggest challenge is identifying the best channel which one is best for you because all channels are not meant for everything you need to understand by whether you are you going to use a facebook whether you are going to use a, a instagram or you are going to use your uh, linkedin which particular platform is best for you they you need to understand because that depends on what kind of resources you have designed or what kind of components you have looked into it so there are you need to you know constantly you know you have to carry out an evaluations and all and you have to get a lot of responses from that but that is what i say it is a currently the country is on smart basically which is sustainable measurable because everything has to be measurable attainable retrievable and then the you know the transformational has to be take place and all so it is very important for all of us to you know plan a strategy so there is a nine steps to build a digital marketing strategy like first of all you whenever you are developing something you have to develop what is the goal what was the objective <coughs> who are your customers or maybe users what is the competitors reach research what is the search engine marketing what is the social media marketing what is the email marketing whether you will go for a content marketing or a mobile marketing and then how you are going to measure the results and all and there are some elements of successful marketing strategy are there you have an engaging website you come up with a search engine optimization you have a content marketing you have an email marketing social media marketing pay per click is also there so all this component but most important thing is that what i generally call it as 5w and 1h who what why where and when 
and at the end it is how how do you create that particular content so so you bringing out a relationship your content is at the core so on one hand it is the content it is the substance how do we know that is the right content and how will this content appears across channels and the other hand is your people so do we have the skills or the budget or the tools or the time to create that like for example these are some of the very important questions and i have been using it in fact i used it in my previous institution that's why you can see here there is a hashtag called terry digital terry is there so similar kind of a thing i was also part of it so i looked into all these components i looked very deeply into it who is in charge of the ongoing content and it has to be a ongoing process it is not going to be a one time but in a regular basis because currently we really need to navigate the world which is and you it is very important that we have to turn the ideas and data insights into a personal experience that help to explore the contents because today the user the stakeholder or a customers are in charge they only engage on your terms on their terms not yours you cannot define them they will tell you <laughs> what they want so there is a changing landscape has taken place 70% of consumer trust recommendations from other consumers 71% companies use facebook 59% are using twitter so this is a just a there is a total dramatic change a paradigm shift has taken place towards as far as the data is concerned so you have to win more customers and make them more valuable also so there is a very important in component is that you need to have an integrated approach so i generally call it as a cct approach where you have marketing where you have a context that is a purpose content been communication and technology means new wave of technology so the popular digital marketing techniques are like affiliate marketing display advertising social media marketing search engine marketing search engine optimization email marketing mobile marketing there is a lot of you know things are there but we are all aware of the marketing mix but in today's context what is most important is what is called as digital marketing mix <coughs> you have content marketing you have a blogging you may have to go for search engine optimization you have a mobile marketing email marketing online branding social media public relations online advertisements and video marketing so there is a another new thing which has come up in a big way when i was teaching the students on this marketing areas like for example the cultural marketing the company the organization they understand the community issue that it is through their business community of consumers employees channel partners and their shareholders so the birth of creative society and human spirit has taken place say for example if i take an example of the book called the seeker prallas book fortune at the bottom of the pyramid how creativity also sprout in the poor societies like i'll give you an example there was a very interesting model of well labl model lighting a billion lives this model which we have used in in our you know in my previous institutions in terry where a tremendous marketing has taken place based on this so we need to understand even in the social sector or in the rural sector also we need to understand what is their pain points and how we can you know get in touch with them there is a very interesting uh, you know uh, author called seth gobin and uh, he is a very famous author. so what he said in his book that consumers are connected to one another that is the webs consumers are connected to a leader that is the hubs and consumers are connected to an idea that is a pulse so these are some of the this is called <laughs> in his language this is called a communitization model that you create a community in that area another important place i'm sure all of you know that in currently this is a very big thing howard schultz of the starbucks the person who started the you know starbucks he said third place for drinking coffee is going to be the starbucks <laughs> because according to mark gobe he says that there is something called as emotional where you connect the people's brand with brand with them you you are talking about the emotions and all 
like for example if you need, even in your emotional marketing when you develop a such kind of a resources and if you have an emotional marketing in those components automatically you can create on these areas some of the marketing trend which is a very popular in fact i am conducting a lot of training programs in these areas called you know storytelling which is a very uh, important process of storytelling is a branding is taking place in an online when you can see online all resources are there so there are six factors which are important in content marketing process document content strategy have a someone in charge of the content consistently publish quality content it is not that once you have done it is gone no map the content to the journey balance paid own earn and then your roi comes into the picture so these are some of the things now how do you align your content the you carry out your content audit your production plan your performance measurement and then ultimately you go for a distribution of that so some of these things i have already discussed actually <laughs> quickly i want to uh, tell you about this particular component which is called as video marketing which is coming up in a big way now video is really revolutionizing the communication and digital transformation too in fact one of the major person which you can see here is low bottom low bottom is basically his name is nickname is sweet law he is said to be the father the godfather of the video marketing and in fact he uh, he was the first person who said that youtube in 2005 is going to really flash the market and he helped thousands of entrepreneurs and companies today to create and leverage an online video to build their brands and dramatically grow their revenues and all so there is something called as a social media marketing like facebook marketing twitter marketing instagram marketing blog marketing all these components are there so quickly i will look uh, get into that like social interactions you do <coughs> you have social media page amplification rates are there time spent on a particular website or a particular social media page the return visits the conversion rates of each and every when you get into the business the referral traffic growth so there there are certain components are there with a click through rates and i have been teaching this so probably these are some of the part of my own teaching on this so now i'll come down to because there is a shortage of time so i'll come down to my the major component of it and which where i will show you basically i generally do a workshop on this where application of open ai chat gpt and it is linked with the digital marketing as dr uh, uh, dr pr goswami said that chat gpt yes it has got uh, two sides of a coin it has got both pros and cons also people are using it in a different way but i used it in a much more positive way in a chat gpt so what i will discuss uh, chat gpt is a basically a buzzword even in the, all the marketing sector they are using it because it is ai powered and the day it was in november it was launched and it was already at that time crossed almost 1 million subscriber and today you open any video chat anything in, in the world you find that there is a people are talking about open ai or artificial intelligence and all there's a different the thing <coughs> it's a basically a ai technology it uses deep learning algorithms so why chat gpt is distinct from others <clears throat> let me tell you that that it is distinct from other chatbots is the quality of its human like response because if you write anything it gives you back a lot of responses in fact when initially i started working into it i did a lot of experimentation with this it can write poems it can write short essays emails letters and other written materials but one thing i would like to hear caution everybody here whatever you are doing in a chat gpt i think human intelligence is most important <coughs> it can give you a lot of response to it but when you are going to do it you will find mm. that in the chat gpt there is uh, you need to get into the subject and the context and each and every line of it you have to really read and give it a new shape to that some of the best strategies for using open ai chat gpt are like content creation and optimization 
you can do a lot of marketing spot personalization you can do a customer behavior analysis you can do a localization even report generation customer feedback management market research all these things you can do with the help of a chat gpt and all like for example if i write there list five ad copies for apple ear bag if i give a simple question to the chat gpt the chat gpt gives me an answer to it so but use that chat gpt to optimize the content and align them with your strategy then so your content strategy should be ready before you use the chat gpt for that purpose and i'll show you that it can be a powerful tool for content creation and optimization it can write meta description titles headers image keyword rich content and all it can also condense long term articles into short shareable pieces and all it will provide you a list of popular keywords like synonyms alternative words and all and lot of things can come into that like here if i look if I, when i'm using it like 10 keywords for influencer we are in 2023 and i can see all the 10 important keywords with the best of the influencers are given on this answer <laughs> but whatever <coughs> answer is given you have to cross check it also it can run the feedback of comments on chat gpt to understand and customize the sentiment you can paste customer reviews on the dialog box to get insights what a customer feels about your products or services and this was a very interesting case study when i was showing it telling it to my students at actually so this is a complete case what chat gpt has helped me when this case was given there immediately that case chat gpt have gone through that particular text and given me a sentiment analytics of that and it has given an answer to me that the because of the negative experience of a product of a customer he was not very happy so chat gpt can also help you to formulate and most appropriate response to the customer feedbacks also it can write an email beautiful email can can write it can analyze the language patterns and behavioral cues and but please remember this app is not perfect so it still requires a bit of manual effort to fine tune the message and ensure it can address the actual issue which you are trying to address i am not saying that it is going to give you a 100% answer to it no it will never give you need a human intervention into that because chat gpt capability is to boost the ppc campaigns pay per click it has a capability like 47% of marketing professional trust the artificial engines to target the ads and there are several platforms now that has come up now so what i will do here i'll show you straight away the there are a lot of things are there but there are certain limitations like chat gpt can argument the arsenal of digital tools used by marketers and business owner you are trying to say something and the chat gpt can you know counteract it lacks a common sense of knowledge and empathy so it is possible you to get inaccurate irrelevant inappropriate or insensitive responses so you will be able to get such kind of a thing so generally it was a workshop so first of all let me tell you let me explain you this is exactly what you can also do for your library you can do a library marketing <coughs> please remember this is not a rocket science i experimented with my students and i got a successful results it would have been better i could have shown you some of the results but uh, because of some problem i can't show it to you because i am no more with that institutions now so what you need to do is basically you have to register in chat gpt with your email id point number 2 is you have to choose whether you want to do a product or a service which you want to market whether you want to any library product or you want to market any library service then you have to write something to the chat gpt that say for example act as a youtuber and can you generate a script for branding or influencer marketing for an instagram or facebook or linkedin or something on such and such product or a such and such service 
If you write that in the chat GPT, you will get a total script on that. Now, before you finalize that script, I would suggest each one of you to please evaluate the script first and then finalize it. Because you should be very clear the kind of content which you want from that marketing thing. So the assignment two was given was as creating the script. Then you have to create an animated character and I will show you that how you will create that animated character. You can add a background. You can give a, your library background or some other cartoon background. You can give it to it. Beautiful backgrounds can be given. You can get, add a different kind of illustrations also. You can add a music to it. And whatever the character is saying, you can add a subtitle to it also. So first, you have created a script for a particular product or a service. Then you have chosen an animated character. Say, for example, I'm a man. Or maybe one of my colleagues, she is a female character. So she will choose a beautiful female character. You will add a background to it. You will add a illustrations. You will give it a music, a very light music at the background. And you can add subtitles also. So you, what you have to do is basically this is a software, a platform which is called as animator.com. Here, <laughs> you can build your own character. Say, for example, this character resembles me. Probably I can put a, you know, specs or something like that. It has got two versions. One version is the free version. Another is a prized version. So for your experimentation purpose, please do not go for the prized version. Initially, you go for the free version. Develop it, make your confidence, and then you can go for the prized versions where you get much more facilities. Once you have done that, probably you can create, you have identified the character, you have given in a character, so complete you know, everything into that. And then when you have given that character the entire thing, integrate it with your script. Now that is where the entire art is. And this is very simple. You have to just, the, the script which you have got from the chat GBT, you have to just integrate it and it will ask you for that script. Now, here your creativity comes into the picture. And when you do that, say, for example, if you are moving out or you are going, let me see if I can show you one example of that. If I, if I, if I use, say, for example, I'm going to sit on a chair and I'm going to talk. So that kind of creativity you need to think before you design it. And somebody would be, say, I mean, you will be saying it. So you can also try to create your own characters also. You can come up with your own cartoonist, cartoonistic picture and you can try with that. But that would be for the prized versions you can create that. And in fact, this is a very, very simple process. <laughs> it can help you to create. It has got a tutorial also. It can easily, you can take you around with that. And you can train you on this particular purpose. Generally, when I do my workshops, generally, I tell my students to participants to do such kind of a training programs and all. There are certain things like, for example, you want to put, a, you have got a character. Now you want to have your, your own voice at the back. So I can do that also. I can do with the help of this, like this is a very powerful platform called Eleven Labs, where you can record your own voice also and you can integrate it with your animator.com and all and you can put your voice to you can also use another very interesting platform if you want to have a lively platform which is called as a did you can try that also it is a digital people and where you already got a text available with your chat gpt just put it directly on the character which you have selected here and here you get a much more lively characters and then you can integrate it and you can put it up into that. There are several tools are available, but I would suggest that right now you can see there is a huge boom of 
different kinds of characters has come up in the market but i would suggest you start with this animated.com it is a much more simplified version and once you have ex developed a spot in a expertise probably you can do it for your different kinds of library products or a library service and all so thank you very much so this is what i would be happy to take any questions and all thank you very much i'm sorry i had a cough and cold so i was coughing Problem. Any questions? So we have some questions. So if any question is, uh, so any of the participants, they can also raise the question either through chat or either uh, speaking. So we have some questions on the chat box. So should I uh, read out the question? So one question is on uh, uh, related to marketing, major problems in marketing. Is it useful yeah. to increase the usage of library services and resources? Please explain it with an example. Uh, can you repeat the question, Anu? Actually, question is not uh, clear. So it is written major problems in marketing, full stop. Is it useful to increase the usage of library services and resources uh, through, yes. I think, marketing. Please explain yes, it. It is, it, is, it is very much necessary. And uh, I have uh, proved, I got it proved in my current institutions also. You, If you don't see, people need to understand library marketing means making an awareness building. We have, a, we are custodian of all the resources. We have a huge collection of resources are there. But if we keep on, you know, building the resources and all, and if we don't go and proactively approach the, our stakeholders, then I think we are not doing enough. So it is extremely important to carry out with, the, uh, with this marketing process. And then, in fact, in my uh, in my um, entire uh, in my uh, SDFC library, I have created a kind of a calendar where people would be going for different kinds of library marketing approaches both uh, digital as well as physical. So we generally call it call it as a digital nowadays. The new concept is called digital, I mean, because it is a blend of both physical and digital. Okay. <clears throat> so another question is all features are probably available with the uh, price version and the price version is little expensive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, I, that's I mentioned in my presentation itself. Because uh, the basic thing should be developed, people should be, it is not a very easy thing that uh, suddenly you will be able to develop because you have to create a content, you have to identify your product, you have to create a content, and once you have created a content, then you put it on a, a free version of it. When you are confident enough, then you only you can go for a priced version and all. And generally, individual pricing and the institutional pricing are there. So many of my students, in fact, they have bought it and and they have used best of the, you know, best of the presentations they have developed. I don't know whether I can show it here or not. I can show, uh, can you permit me for two minutes? If I can show hey. one video at least? Yeah, yeah, please do it. Okay, just give me one minute. Uh, let me see if I can show that one video. Let, uh, just tell me whether if you can see the video, I don't know whether the sound and all would be there or not. Not yet running.
So the video is not running. Oh, I, I think uh, you are uh, you guys are unable to see it because uh, it is a video actually. Okay. okay. Uh, uh, it is a video actually. Otherwise, I mean, basically, like many of my students, they have done their entrepreneurship projects, and they have done an Instagram marketing using these kinds of platforms and all. They have developed it there. So it is called a Finjoy, basically a gaming learning model. They have developed using this animator, and this is a this was developed with a free version actually. That's why you can see the animator.com. That logo is there on the right hand side. If you buy a prized versions, so they will not provide these logos and all. You can do the customization as per your requirement. Okay. Okay. So uh, we have some more questions. Uh, Yeah, so there is one comment from Dr. Anil Kumar. If it is not possible to run the PPT on screen, but talking on chat GPT and AI, it is, it's look little too bit funny. Huh? I <laughs> little bit it. funny. So what? actually, uh, people uh, didn't see you moving up your uh, presentation. So yeah. yeah, some slides are stagnant or... Uh, yeah, see, basically, I told you that because generally I do it on a, <laughs> on a uh, if it is not possible to, <laughs> but talking on chat GPT and AI, it's a little bit funny. Yeah. yeah, Dr. Anil, I think you are right. And I don't have any, because generally I do it on a physical thing where I can show you more of these applications, actually. I completely, yeah. Yeah, it yeah. is animated.com is the confirm. How can we get metadata in chat GPT? Well, that's a million dollar questions. I have never tried, but you can certainly you can try if you can get a metadata, you can create a metadata of a book. Is only chat GPT future for library? No, not at all. Uh, site for animation, I think already somebody has written. PPT is not visible, sir. Could you please share the PPT presentation with us? AI replaces the human resource in library? No. Both of, see, basically we need to understand these tools, these technologies, they are just nothing but a facilitators. They are just facilitators. They provide us an enhancement for doing it for somebody or the other. I am not able to attend the full session. Please share with the recording name of the site for animate, animator.com. Uh, what are the challenges posed before libraries by chat GPT? I don't think there are any challenges. Libraries, something different challenges are, there are different other challenges are there. What is the integrity of chat GPT? Well, that's a question. That's why I said in the, uh, uh, in the beginning itself that when you are doing a uh, particular writing a script, I, I, I have already given that disclaimer that uh, you have to have a, your own human intelligence on creating that script which you have developed. Your intervention is always there. And for each of the videos, I have developed almost 15, 20 videos on my, with my students. So I have gone through each and every, uh, you know, each and every script. And then only it was developed. Well, I have already mentioned there are, there are uh, videos. I am opening the animated.com, but it is not opening and showing. It has a threat to open. I don't know why, but it opens. Is there any embargo with news and latest media information through chat GPT? Uh, I'm not aware of it. Sir, could you please elaborate the kinds of library services uh, that can be implemented using chat GPT? Well, uh, in my institutions, we don't, uh, we, I generally, we use it for this kinds of uh, making these kinds of videos or something, but uh, actual sense we don't uh, promote chat GPT because we deal with the students and all. So, may I give me a nice explanation, but now it is price, so how we can integrate in our library service for a low budget library? Well, there is a free version also, chat GPT, open AI is a free version. Uh, you can have your email ID and you can make a member of that and you can get every answer to it. What are the AI capabilities to engage with patrons, provide information and promote library services? Please answer. 
well uh, currently uh, one there are several capabilities are there because let me tell you that artificial intelligence is a very big uh, umbrella it's a very very big umbrella and uh, i am already uh, you know on working on several uh, started working on uh, uh, on different kinds of projects <laughs> where basically uh, these kinds of uh, ai applications will be used at different places i have engaged my students to use ai and all like for example i am working with i am trying to you know uh, look into several kinds of projects actually i can't you know mention you here because it is still in a we are thinking we are in an ideation state actually well you get a certificate probably i think organizer will provide you the certificate uh, is it possible to increase reading habit among the library users using ai well yes uh, we have uh, started uh, developing different kinds of like for example i told you in the beginning like sdfc library where we did a lot of library marketing now students the footfalls have increased uh, tremendous <coughs> faculties are using <coughs> are giving lot of assignments which are uh, embedded into their course material so they are coming and looking into those assignments and so it has increased a lot we are also promoting the you know uh, promoting that's what i said that digital like something physical and something digital marketing we are constantly doing it and um, like for example the lot of uh, information literacy sessions we are doing and um, i mean lot of activities have, to have grown, uh, gone up and we are also coming up with different kinds of digital like for example this digital research support service and all these kind of things we are actually doing it is there's a lot of questions are coming is there any exclusive missions or forms in india currently providing orientation for library professional on the updation of in technologies or ai well um, i don't know exactly but there are a lot of programs are coming up to increase visibility of a particular content in searches i don't know why it is going out chats i think there is a lot of increase in chats is taking place do you think i can take each and every there is a lot of questions are there some uh, people are yeah you can take over four five can you suggest more. some ways using chat gpt we may meet library budget cut possibilities i don't know man some of the questions i don't have an answer to it i mean it is i always say see chat gpt is not going to uh, give you a library budget on that it can give you a tentative budget but that would be all on international budgets and all chat gpt is not an answer for everything some ways using chat gpt we may meet library by how can integrate chat gpt into my application if you are aware integrate chat gpt into my application i don't know what is it what my i don't know shiva what you are trying to say congratulations for maintaining the sdfc library in world class this webinar is helpful to librarian to take new initiative to his service thanks for this webinar dr ranguli and rr sir we talked about computers computerization network need library and now ai still many libraries are struggling to provide basic services do they ai can bridge the gap well yes when i uh, ai will be able to bridge the gap because there are low cost ais are coming up which are de being developed in india and i am sure many of the things are going to really give a lot of answers to it we have to go with the Uh, the uh, flow of the river we cannot you know go opposite directions how we can use it for school libraries well school libraries i think i have done a lot of programs with the school libraries and this kinds of uh, library marketing is required there too that's also a very important library and uh, in fact among the students you can create use this kind of uh, workshop uh, for the students and that will be very helpful for all of you
can we integrate AI and chat GPT and automation with software? Yes, we can. <coughs> I am working on it. <coughs> chat GPT, <coughs> there is a prized version and there is an open AI, which is a free versions. Basically, it can really help you on that. It is called as chat GPT open AI. When the faculty emphasizes creativity in students, term paper submit, students submit the work, simply the AI tools, how to control the attitude of students. Thanks, Raja. Well, Raja, we have uh, used a very interesting platform where, uh, in fact, right now, the all these software which are coming up, like Turn IT in, your ER job, both of them have got a very strong capability of identifying the uh, AI-based write-ups, if the student have used, they can really pick it up. And there are some special features are available with the ER job platform also. ChatGPT will help you in developing a marketing plan. An excellent marketing plan can be developed. Hundred and very good marketing plan can be developed for them. But only thing is that what I'm saying that uh, it can develop a library marketing plan, but please, uh, please name the platform where to add the voice to the animated character form. That has said that L Labs, 11 Labs, 11 Labs is the platform where you can have the voice also, or you can uh, also use, uh, in my uh, presentation recording, you will see that there is another platform where you have the text, where the you, if you have the voice, it can convert into text and then it can go into the animation also. In fact, you can like, for example, my picture can be taken or there are some inbuilt pictures are there. You can give them a voice and it can also spell out that. That can also done. But that is going to be with the priced version, not with the free version. Anup, anything else? No, it's okay. So you covered most of the things uh, which are written on the Q and A uh, tab. So I think uh, you answered most of the questions. So one question I got from uh, one uh, one of my friends, Dr. Robishankar Giri, what are the ways to increase visibility of a particular content in search engine result using chat GPT or AI? Well, uh, that's uh, Robishankar has given a very good question now. Uh, see, basically, what we are doing it in, um, I mean, we are planning to do that in the in our literatures of India, where basically we are uh, going to use a lot of LLM models as well as the deep learning models into that, so that uh, you know different languages, uh, um, different types of languages related components can be searched by the faculty members uh, for their research purpose or as well as for the students because um, is uh, because Ashoka University works on an interdisciplinary area and uh, we have a lot of, you know, we in fact, we have started with the literature. In fact, we got a platform. In fact, I don't know how many of you are aware there was a platform called Kibo, basically where, but one of the important thing is that we need to understand whether it is doing a transliteration or translation. So there is a vast difference between a transliteration and translation. So Kibo software is already, uh, they. Uh, I had a lot of discussions with them also, but they have not come up to the mark uh, with the, as far as the, uh, the transliteration is concerned, where it is doing a lot of translations and all, but, uh, in many cases, we have used uh, a lot of AIs to look into some of the things because the translations which were done and uh, we are still have a lot of mistakes are there. So human intervention was there. So uh, it was not very successful. So now we are trying to, you know, we ourselves trying to work out on those areas. Sure. Can I take one question from the audience? So, uh, yes, why not? Oyan Mundal, are you online? Oyan Mundal? So, you yeah, raised, is there. You raised hand. Are you online? I'm audible. Hello. 
yeah you are audible uh, thank you so much dr ganguly for this wonderful and informative uh, session actually it's not like a question uh, uh, actually when you are telling about this vis visibility and the uh, illustration part i know there is one uh, actually a poster hanging uh, in front of my wall so i just uh, recalling one thing that uh, nowadays that uh, video marketing or that video or whatever it means is illustration things are very important for the any for the library users or anybody so i just uh, recalling that uh, digital marketing or library marketing is very important and it play a crucial role when our content is ready or up to the mark right as you are telling our library have lots of out out of print collection like antiquarian books and all these things um so i when when i joined here i also come to know that lots of things lots of new things as i'm telling about the posters that uh, i'm just telling it it takes one minute time so in our independence india the biggest advertisement i think the air india right and recently we come to know about one term like maharaja of the air india when uh, tata took over uh, air india from the government right but air india started its advertisement in the beginning in the pre or post independence time right but many of us we don't know about the maharaja that is started tata started long before right so that type of content when we make it available or when you use it for our digital marketing for the library service then only the users come to know about that right so that's why a proper processing of the content scanning some of the illustration from the book or whatever the document and highlighting it or marketing uh, for the users then only user get more attention so that's why i wanted to say that the proper content processing is very much important for the digital marketing most of the library we don't have that proper processing of the document right that's the thing i just want to highlight thank you dr ganguly for uh, this wonderful session yeah i and i think you are absolutely right i think in my presentation the second presentation i mentioned that we need to have a proper content strategy because unless and until you have developed a content strategy you cannot do a library marketing or whatever marketing is it you need to have a proper content strategy that which content is important for what particular purpose because for every content there is an odd set that a certain set of audience and you need to understand those audiences emotions actually so you have more time so actually three more persons are raising hand so if you have time i can allow some more questions so priya rai uh, priya r are you, are you there are you online ah uh, yes sir i am online okay okay can you can you have your question you raised your hand you have any question so i could not hear you anyway uh, uh Aditya Yadav, are you online? Do you have any question? No, actually, I think they are not. Seems that they have maybe for an experimentation purpose they have raised that. <laughs> okay, okay, yeah. on amitesh are you online you yes sir i'm online you you have any question sir my question is only one that uh, nowadays also in research paper from foreign countries authors write in reference that they are using chat gpt is, is it ethical and now in uh, uh, now in today's uh, world using uh, chat gpt all our students are using chat gpt 
and they are not uh, making their more effort to read article. See, uh, Amitesh, let me tell you that, see, I, I mentioned it in the beginning itself that there are several tools. To, forget about chat GPT. Chat GPT is the current buzzword. Yes. Before chat GPT, there was also people who have been writing articles and all. There were several other kinds of tools were available. Now, the question is that whether the student are using it or not, that's a very different thing. Like, for example, let me give you an example. I've been in my previous institutions. I, I, I came across that one student was writing an answer because he has got a chat GPT now and which is there in his mobile. So he was writing the question in the mobile and the mobile is giving him all the answers. So Im immediately he was debarred from the examinations. From the semester examination, he was debarred. So see, basically, this kind of mischief, this kind of a thing will carry on. But that, I, as I mentioned that every technology which is coming full forth, it has got two sides of a coin. The only thing is that how you use it. I mean, as an individual, how I am using it. Like, for example, when ChatGPT came, I have not written any article on ChatGPT or neither have taken any help of ChatGPT of writing it. But what I have used it, basically, I find that I can, uh, I came across that I think it can write a script for me on a particular product. So it wrote a script for me for a particular product. And then I gave my inputs into that product. I'm That's from the beginning itself, I said that this product, whatever output is coming out, these are not final. We really need, need an humor intervention into that. So I started writing into, I going into each and every script components, gone through all the details and all, then only I used it for my different kinds of models. So uh, Amitesh, the question is that how technology is there. What is your mindset? How do you want to use it? You want to use it for a good thing or you want to use it for a bad thing? Sir, I was writing a, uh, I was preparing a research paper on drill bit plagiarism detection software. Yeah. When I go through the literature review, there were uh, no any articles related to drill bit plagiarism detection software. Yeah. So um, for that, I consulted to the website manager as well. And also I took a help from chat GPT. Was it okay. good or bad? Well, it is your your uh, justice, justice. Whether you will take something appropriate from chat GPT or not, number one. In fact, if you are taking it from ChatGPT, do a proper referencing of ChatGPT then. Then it is ethical. Well, I, I think so if it is giving you a proper answer. Because the answer which has come up, see, what is a ChatGPT? What is an artificial intelligence? The answer which you, cover, which you get, you are unable to find out even from a Google search. So what AI has done, AI has gone into the millions and millions of pages and pulled out the relevant information from there as per your requirement. And there is a chat GPT platform which is giving you an answer to it. They are not rebuilding it. They are collecting the resources which is already published there and they are putting, putting there and in a systematic way. If you ask your chat GPT that what is the reference of what from where did you get it? It will give an answer to that also. Sir, sometimes uh, chat GPT also gives uh, wrong references or uh, yes. uh, false citations. So yes. how can we uh, be reliable uh, for that chat GPT uh, references and citations? Uh, Amitesh, that is what I said. Your human intelligence is the most important thing. You you yourself have decided. You yourself have given the answer. No? The chat yeah. GPT has given a wrong uh, references. So it means human intelligence have worked out. No? Yes. So we cannot have more questions due to paucity of time. So uh, I would like to move on to Thank next, you, next item. Uh, that is vote of thanks. So on behalf of uh, Ranganathan Research Circle, so I would like to uh, give vote of thanks. So uh, I would like to thank our 
speaker, Professor Santunu Ganguly, for sparing your time, valuable time, on Saturday evening because you are so busy. And also, you gave your time for this RRC uh, webinar, and which is most successful in recent times because we got more than 300 participants online. And also, we got a number of questions, more than 40 questions we answered on Q&A panel as well as on, uh, on the screen. So thank you very much, uh, Professor Ganguly, for uh, wonderful lecture and also answering all the questions. And thank also, you. Yeah. Thank you, Anup. And also, we would like to thank CMIE, Center for Monitoring Indian Economy, for giving us uh, the platform, uh, which is Zoom platform, for conducting this webinar. And I would like to thank our RSC members, all the members who are present here online, and also that uh, all the conveners, and also head of the program committee, Professor, Professor Pierre Goswami and Dr. Nirmal Kumar Khatri. So thank you very much for giving us uh, introducing this webinar and how to use ChatGPT for the library purposes, library services. So this is wonderful talk we had this evening. And uh, we would like to thank Mr. Rajiv Ranjan of CMI for giving us opportunity to uh, use this platform. So all the participants, thanks for raising your questions. And also, uh, I have shared my uh, our feedback form online uh, through Q&A panel. So you can fill up this uh, feedback form. And uh, if our time permits, we can uh, send you all the certificate and also recording of this video. So thank you all. And we would like to see you in the next next of our RSC meeting or RSC uh, webinar and other programs. So thank you all. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Goswami. Thank you, Nirmalji. Thank you, Rajiv. Thank you, Anup. Thank all the participants. Okay, bye-bye.